Some buildings can tell the story of history. Other buildings can distract you from historical facts. And the Alhambra probably falls into category number two. When people look at the Alhambra, they think of magnificence and beauty. What they don't think about are the events that occurred within the palace. The word Alhambra comes from the Arabic word Alhamra, which means the red. And they called it the red because when the sun shines on it at certain, part, certain times of the day, it appears red. But maybe they called it the red because the amount of blood that was shed between the Nasrid family within this palace. Let me explain. The story of the decline of the Emirate of Granada can be divided into the early 1400s and the late 1400s. As for the early 1400s, that story all revolves around one man called Muhammad the Ninth and his relationship with the Alhambra Palace. Muhammad the Ninth was the grandson of Muhammad the Fifth, the man who made the Nasrid palaces within the Alhambra Palace. And Muhammad the Ninth became the Sultan after deposing Muhammad the Eighth. Muhammad VIII was a young region sultan, too young to rule and an easy target. Therefore, Muhammad IX decided to do a coup and get rid of him. And therefore, Muhammad IX entered the Alhambra Palace and started ruling the Emirate of Granada. The young boy Muhammad VIII was left untouched. But when he attained manhood, he returned and actually did a coup over Muhammad the Ninth. Muhammad the Ninth then had to wait for a couple of years to get his chance, and then he did a coup again. But this time, he wouldn't leave the young boy. He had him assassinated, and he wouldn't make the same mistake twice. And that allowed Muhammad the Ninth to enter the Alhambra Palace and start ruling the Emirates of Granada for a second time. This execution proved to be very unpopular with large segments of the population of Granada. Therefore, after some time, they called for Muhammad the Ninth to be replaced. And they put forward someone else, and he was called Yusuf. And this man Yusuf actually had the support of the Kingdom of Castile. And therefore, he became Yusuf the Fourth and a sultan of the emirate of Granada while Muhammad the Ninth had to flee. Castilian support for Yusuf the Fourth was conditional and the mother of all conditions was he had to pay higher tributary payments back to Castile. In order to do this, he had to tax his population higher than what was being taxed before. And of course, no population likes that. So the population decided they wanted to get rid of Yusuf IV. And guess who they turned to? None other than Muhammad IX. Therefore, Muhammad IX performed a coup and Yusuf IV was deposed and killed. And that allowed Muhammad IX to re-enter the Alhambra Palace and start ruling the Emirates of Granada for a third time. Muhammad IX now ruled the Emirate of Granada for 13 years. That is, of course, until he was deposed by Muhammad X. But Muhammad IX had the mentality of a boxer. Whenever you get knocked down, you get back up. And guess what? A few years later, he was able to depose Muhammad X in a coup. And that allowed Muhammad IX to re-enter the Alhambra Palace and start ruling the Emirates of Granada for a fourth time.
his fourth reign was his most successful and he was never deposed he actually died of natural causes but just before he died he'd realized he didn't have any sons and therefore no heirs so he had to appoint someone um, to take his place who would that be that would be the son of Muhammad the eighth if you remember Muhammad the eighth is someone who not only did he depose twice but he also assassinated him so Muhammad the eighth son became the successor of Muhammad the ninth and guess what his name was Muhammad so he was Muhammad the eleventh If the story of the early 1400s was all about Muhammad the ninth and his boxer-like characteristics then the story of the late 1400s can only be described as a story of lust, love, revenge, deceit, political ambition and downright stupidity. So if you're looking for a happy ending, turn off now. Actually, don't turn off. Watch the video to the end, subscribe to my channel and press the bell button for notifications. It was the 1460s and the 1470s and the man on the, th on the throne ruling the Emirate of Granada was called, have a guess, Abul Hassan Ali, gotcha, not Muhammad. And he was married to a lady called Aisha. And Aisha was very politically active within the court at the Alhambra Palace. And she would play a leading role in what happened in Granada over the next 20 to 30 years. She was the daughter of none other than Muhammad the Ninth, who had ruled Granada four times. So politics was in her blood. And together they both had a son called Muhammad. Yes, they had to be a Muhammad somewhere, didn't they? And he was their heir apparent. And one key feature of the rule of Abu Hassan Ali is that he refused to pay the tributary payments to the, uh, to the Kingdom of Castile. And it was those payments which were keeping the Emirate of Granada safe. So it was a very bold move, but it couldn't have come at a more worse time. In 1469, Queen Isabella of Castile and King Ferdinand of Aragon got married and therefore the, the crowns of the two kingdoms were united. Previously, the Muslims would play one off against the other with tributary payments to one of them, but now that was not possible. And Isabella and Fernando, or Isabella and Ferdinand, were very keen to complete the reconquest and they had the latest weapons enabling them to do so, and that was superior cannons which would make military warfare along the fortified uh, frontier towns a lot easier. Therefore, a larger, more powerful, unified Catholic state came into existence in the north, while in the south, the Emirate of Granada had been isolated from North Africa for some time now. And as a result of this isolation and weakness, Gibraltar fell in the year 1479, and that allowed Fernando and Isabella exactly what they needed a land route along the south coast of the peninsula to get into the, into the kingdom of Granada and complete the Reconquista. One day the army of Granada were returning from some border skirmishes with the Castilian forces and with them were some captives and one of the captives was a lady called Isabel de Solis and she was the daughter of a Castilian nobleman. She was brought to the palace where she became one of the concubines of Abul Hassan Ali, the Sultan and after a short period of time he fell madly in love with her and married her and took her as a second wife. She gave him two sons and he, because he loved her so much, uh, her two sons became the heirs of the throne. She had converted to Islam and adopted the name Thuraya. As for wife number one, Aisha, she was sidelined. She was sent out of the Alhambra palace and she ended up here in a place called Dar al-Hurra where she lived 
for a number of years, but Aisha was not happy. This obviously angered wife number one, Aisha, because not only had her husband upgraded to a younger, more beautiful wife, but also her son had been sidelined for the throne in Granada. And remember, this Aisha wasn't any old Aisha. This was Aisha, daughter of Muhammad the Ninth, the man who ruled the Emirate of Granada four times and was the king of comebacks. And the time had come for Aisha to make her comeback. And that is when she used her power and influence way over there on the other side of the valley in the court of Alhambra to get her own husband deposed and replaced by her son as the new Sultan of the Emirate of Granada. In 1482, he became Muhammad the 12th. And he's uh, also known as Abu Abdullah, but the Spanish pronounced that as Boabdil. As for Abu Hassan Ali, he was still around within the Emirate he just wasn't sitting on his throne anymore. So the new Sultan, Muhammad XII, also known as Bu Abdil, had come to the throne and he wanted to prove that he was the man for the job. But both you and I know he only, he only became Sultan because his mum got him the job and he knew that as well. So he wanted to show to his subject population that actually I'm capable, I could do this. So he came up with a plan. He was going to go into Castilian territory, uh, taking the army, leading the army himself, and they were going to do a smash and grab raid, and he was gonna come back with lots of loot so he could then say to the population here, look, I'm the man. However, disaster struck while he was on this little smash and grab raid the only thing that got grabbed was him he got caught and he got taken into captivity under the Castilians so he ended up under Ferdinand and Isabella so what was supposed to be an endeavor which would make him look good actually made him look terrible that paved the way for Abu Hassan Ali to retake the throne in the Alhambra palace however he only lived for two years and then died so he was replaced by his brother who was called Muhammad and he became Muhammad the 13th and would 13 be unlucky for some let's see so now we have two Muhammads on the scene we have Muhammad the 12th who is in captivity in Castile with Fernando and Isabella and we have Muhammad the 13th who is ruling here the Emirate of Granada Fernando and Isabella approached Muhammad the 12th also known as Boabdil and said we will help you regain your throne here in Granada as long as you do not intervene when we try to capture the port city of Malaga and you also have to help us if needed Muhammad the 12th agreed to all their conditions so they let him go was the plan of his mother Aisha going exactly how she envisaged it I think not. A civil war occurred between Boabdil, also known as Muhammad the Twelfth, and his uncle Muhammad the Thirteenth, who was the Sultan of the Emirate of Granada. This civil war allowed the Castilians to take city after city after city until they reached the port city of Malaga in 1487 and they besieged it with their uh, superior cannons. Muhammad XIII sent a relief force to try and stop the siege but it was intercepted by Muhammad XII's forces Boabdil and therefore Muhammad XII Boabdil had helped Ferdinand and Isabella take Malaga after this, Muhammad the 13th realized the game was up and he fled to North Africa. And just as planned by Ferdinand and Isabella, they got the port city of Malaga and Muhammad the 12th regained the throne here in the Alhambra palace and became the Sultan at the Emirate of Granada. However, he really only controlled the city and the small surroundings around it. 
and how long was he going to last with Isabella and Ferdinand wanting to recomplete the Reconquista. As for Isabella de Solis, the lady who became the second wife of Abul Hassan Ali, converted to Islam, changed her name to Thoreya and gave Abul Hassan Ali two sons. Isabella of Castile was very wary of her two sons because they were Muslim and because potentially when they grew up, the Muslim population of Granada could rally behind them and they could potentially be a threat to her seat should she be able to take the crown and the kingdom of Granada. So she made sure that both sons were baptized as Christians, given Christian names and brought up as Christians so that none of the population of Granada would even think of rallying around a potential Muslim king. Muhammad ibn al-Ahmar, the first ruler of the Nasrid dynasty, had one problem when he was building the Alhambra palace and that problem was a water supply. So what he had to do was make this water channel which you see here and it starts I think 30 or 40 miles back in the Sierra Nevada mountains or maybe 30 or 40 kilometers but it starts a long way back and he had to make these little canals to bring water to the palace because the palace wasn't only just for him it was also it was also like a mini city and that's this is what made the pleasure gardens that they have at the Alhambra and the summer palace all possible these these water channels now when Isabel and Ferdinand came to start the siege and they brought their cannons they worked out that if they could cut the water supply they probably did 90 percent of the job so the siege of Granada started in 1491 and after six months with hardly any fighting because they'd cut the water supply it was all over and Boabdil Muhammad XII surrendered because they'd run out of water and this is the one channel which takes the water into the palace and these are the fortified walls of the city of the palace city Boabdil handed over the keys to Fernando and Isabella and he was to be exiled into the Al Pujara mountains as for the population they were allowed to stay or go up to them and about 200,000 Muslims decided we're out of here and they left for North Africa the remaining 300,000 stayed and they were allowed to keep their religion keep their wealth and keep their houses but the last kingdom the last Islamic kingdom on the Iberian Peninsula had fallen and Ferdinand and Isabella didn't even need their cannons in the end all they had to do was stop that and block it On his way into exile, Muhammad XII, Boabdil, turned round to have one last look at the Alhambra Palace and then he sighed like he'd never sighed before and then he began to weep and weep and weep and then his mother Aisha turned round and looked at him and said words that no man wants to hear from his mother. She said, you cry like a woman for that which you fail to protect like a man. Thanks mom. But then again, what you expect from Aisha? She was, after all, the daughter of the ruthless Muhammad the Ninth. In 
for the fall of the Emirate of Granada? Was it Abul Hassan Ali for his lust and love story with Isabel de Solis who became Thoreya? Or was it his wife Aisha who wanted revenge and got her husband deposed? Or was it Bu'abdil Muhammad XII who in stupidity invaded Castilian land and got caught and also showed political ambition to have his father deposed with his mother? And at more stupidity when he thought that Ferdinand and Isabella were actually leaving him on the throne for any amount of time? Or was it all three of them? Let me know. Pop your answer in the comments section below. The incident between Muhammad XII Abu Abdil and his mother Aisha has gone down in history and it's known as the last sigh of the Moor and in Spanish that is said as Suspiro del Moro and it didn't take place uh, in Granada near the Alhambra it took place as he was walking towards the Alpujara mountains and I'm actually stood in this place now and it's 20, 10 to 20 kilometers outside of Granada Suspiro del Moro so Muhammad the 12th and Aisha have this little thing here to commemorate them making the way out of the palace and into the mountains speaking of their exile um, Muhammad the 12th did not want to stay in the Alpujara mountain because then he would have been staying in a land which he should have been ruling in his eyes so he decided to go to Morocco and he ended up in Fez and around the 1520s the 1530s he died and he's buried in Fez to this day um, later on down the line in the 1600s there's a famous Arab North African historian called Al Muqarri and he was traveling one day through Fez in the 1600s and he came across some people on the street um, who didn't look well off they looked quite poor so he started talking to them and that's when they revealed to him that they were the descendants of Muhammad the 12th Abu Abdil and Al Muqarri says that they lived in a state of poverty and in order to exist they needed to rely on charity so the Nasrid dynasty had gone from ruling Granada in the Alhambra palace one of the greatest pleasure palaces in the world to begging on the streets of Fez in North Africa this paved the way for Fernando and Isabella to enter the Alhambra Palace and start ruling the Emirate of Granada. However, there were still hundreds and thousands of Muslims living here in the Al Bayezin district or the old Muslim quarter. So how would they fare under Catholic rule? Make sure you watch my next episode on the history of Al-Andalus to find out.